Hi guys, welcome to Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge and today we're painting the Oak Gorkonaut. There's a little bit of footage missing because I didn't realise my camera was set to photo and not video. So, one of those classic Big Workshop mess ups. Uh, we started the model with the Vallejo Black Primer. Then we used Dark Rust by Model Colour. What we're going to do is we're going to spray patches all over this and um, we want, want it to be patches because when we do the main yellow colour over the top we're going to chip that off using chipping fluid which you may have seen in some of the other videos but we'll go over it again in this one because it's a key part to making this you know make this orc gorkon orc look good because in, in my opinion the GW one it looks too clean nothing in orc society has ever been that clean we then do a light rust over the top and after that the other patches were done with Doombolt Brown by Games Workshop, which is much more red. As you can see, um, it starts to look really rusty on its own. But we're going to cover that up with the traditional colours. Now, before you put any of the chipping fluid or varnishes on, so you want to put a varnish on, then a chipping fluid, otherwise you may chip some of your paint off. We're now going to put on Filthy Brown by Model... No, Game Colour, sorry. As you can see it's quite a pale yellow at this point, but that's because it's going over black. It's going to take several layers of this. I'm going to cover almost the entirety of the model except for the faceplate. And now we've got a good even coat of that, we're going to use Burnt Umber by Model Air, which is watered down considerably, because what we're going to do is we're going to put this in like a pre-shade but with a rust effect. Because Burnt Umber is works like an Agarac Thirst shade, it just shades and blends everything we'll be using this one a lot and already you can see we're starting to get some depth it may not necessarily look like shadow but what it does look like is something that's been left out in the rain overnight as you can see and this point I gave Andy one of the lights off my desk because uh, we got a new camera thanks to our Patreons and it was picking up Andy's flickering of his lights so we had to split them up so we can make more videos now with the chipping fluid down, remember to do varnish first, then your chipping fluid, then your yellows. All you have to do is add a small amount of water, and I'm just stippling into it with an old toothbrush, and as you can see, uh, paint's starting to peel away because it uh, reacts with the water, making the paint soft, and you can just pick away at it. You may get brighter coloured bits of pigment sticking out of it, so have a bit of tissue or something to wipe your hands on. Use your finger to dab those extra bits of pigment off and clean your finger off so you don't spread the paints anywhere. It's just more of a precaution than anything. And with this, because of the contrasting colours there, I didn't want luminous yellow bits of pigment kicking around where they shouldn't be. As you can see it highlights as well because the yellow on the underneath is um, quite bright compared to the burnt umber coat we did. So it's almost naturally highlighting itself already, but we're going to go around that in the second part to this video, or the third part, because uh, it's taking quite some time this. But that's what happens when I enjoy a project, um, longer videos, more to it. We're now going to go over most of the leg parts in the Vallejo Black Primer, just for the uh, really smooth and even coverage. And we want black because um, we don't want any of that yellow showing through any of the silver or metallic colours that we're going to do. And to be honest, just remembering what metallics I used here, you're probably going to need some sunglasses when working with this stuff because um, oh, it's really, really, really bright. But uh, at the moment, this is <coughs> this is Warp Block Bronze by Games Workshop for the faceplate. It's going to be one of our primary colours for this palette. I'm going to use it for the pistons and other random parts. Anything that you don't want to be silver because you need to break it up, we're going to start doing this colour. Again, I apologise for the light in there. And, you know, as I was saying, here's the pistons that we're doing, we're painting those the same colour. So you don't want everything to be either silver or yellow. Plus, uh, the Wart Wart Bronze is a bit of a weathered looking colour anyway, so I think it works quite well with the Orc. And this is the silver I was talking about, this is liquid silver. Um, you can get whole sets of this, I think we've got 8 to 12 colours. But you can't mix it with water. 
So you're going to have to buy some surgical spirit. If you're in England, you can buy it from Boots or Superdrug or something. It's just 99% proof. It's like 99% alcohol. Um, that's what you use to thin and clean your bushes instead of water because it will not react with water very well because it's got real metallic pigment in it but what you do get from this despite the fact that it's extremely bright at the moment is a really nice smooth coverage it's probably one of the smoothest metallics you can get and of course um, it's far too shiny at this point so we're going to use another oil by Games Workshop we're going to um, give that a good pretty thorough coat, what I should have done, I was in a rush to get this video done, I should have gone give it two coats using Lambiate Medium to keep more in control and at this point I was sort of worried that I'd gone over the top with it but I went back to the old burnt umber and then we uh, then we fixed it up so it doesn't look too bad, still needs a bit more work <laughs> and this is gunmetal grey with a custom made dry brush because I didn't want to use the GW ones, the bristles were a bit too rough and I didn't want to take any of the paint off of the front plate. So this is just a pound shot brush that I've cut down um, so the so the hairs on it don't bend quite as much and we're just going to dry brush all that surface to get the texture and then just on the edges I ended up using the Games Workshop one to get a more defined edge. Just be careful you don't chip some of that paint off. Remember you've coated the thing in chipping fluid. So that bit of metallic, still if you added water to it and started chipping away at it, it would come away quite easily. <laughs> as you can see, that leg doesn't look nowhere near as shiny now and it's starting to match. Full power to the no oil, it's really useful stuff tone down anything it gives it an oily look which is what we're sort of going for because I wanted my coconut to look like it had never been cleaned it had been made of um, junk because that's how orcs work and they don't have a factory in like the Astartes this is burnt umber watered down a lot and then sprayed in as another rust effect over the um, metallics now we're going to dry brush oily steel by model colour over all the bits and pieces that stick out bolts, rivets, edges and that should really start bringing the details out and contrast with everything else but of course we've got the rust on there now which is why we did the rust first so it looks like it's underneath all the metallic parts so it's building up in all the gaps and building up in all the grooves and where the gorkonaut's been stomping around and doing stuff and getting bashed then there's not going to be any rust um, we've, we've done checkers before um, this is just me doing checkers in a slightly different way I only wanted to do the underneath of the arm in checkers because um, I didn't want it to be too distracting although it's a, a big centerpiece so we started with a uh, bane blade brown over those checkers and uh, after that we mixed in the rust so we were sticking to the same palette <clears throat> we'll mix in dark rust in a minute. I've mascold the top off. Not mascold, sorry. I have Tamiya taped the top off because that wants to be sprayed yellow. And you could do the whole thing without tape on, but then when you use when you stop chipping away with a toothbrush, you're gonna chip away and where the yellows come off there's gonna be white underneath and it's gonna look a mess. So this had to be done slightly different. So now we're doing the Paint blade brown with a little drop of uh, dark rust by model colour into it to just do some shading. To be honest, I really like the result of the, that colour combination. It's almost like a, a wet clay. Because from a wet clay to drying, it's a really nice colour transition. Then rack off flesh on its own because recently I've been using this for everything and that's going to be a highlight along the edge where the light will hit the arm. I'm not 100% sure on what position I'm going to have the arm on the Gorkonaut yet, so I've just left them unglued. I sped this up as much as I could, but um, you know, because I thought you'd want to see the result, uh, what it looks like when you start pulling the checkers off. And what I didn't realise was the chipping fluid comes off a little bit with a mask all tape. 
not really an issue for this style of of build because it's an orc vehicle so it's going to get heavily chipped anyway and it'll match. See now what I've done is I've took those squares and put them over the coloured squares that we've previously done to protect them and we're going to go over it with the black by Game, Game Air just because I can control that better than the primer. Um, I'm going to fill in all those black spots in between. But like I was saying, don't miss that point. I have taken the little tiny bits of tape off and I've put them back over the squares that I don't want to be covered up. Then we're going to highlight it with Wolf Grey and a little bit of Dean Black. So add the highlight almost in the same place as the last one. So when we take these off, that highlight runs through all the colours, or it should do. It's difficult to tell why you're doing it, whether or not that's going to have worked, you can't really tell till you've taken it off. As you can see, um, that's worked out really well. The reason it's been done that way again is because of the chipping fluid being pulled off. Uh, didn't want other colours showing underneath, I wanted the rust to show through. I'm actually quite happy with the result of this, so I'm doing some of the shoulder pads in this way as well. And there's a lot more to come on these, this series of videos for the Gorkonaut. This arm took me most of the day to do and then I worked on it for a couple more days. It doesn't matter if you pull off big chunks. You can patch, you can simply patch it all up by um, chipping away at other stuff, adding highlights and painting other patches in. <laughs> but I think the um, colour scheme there and the highlights, they came out really, really nice. I think that's it for this video guys, if you like this video hit like, if you want to see more of our stuff hit subscribe and share with all your friends um, or join us on Patreon where um, there will be even more of these videos coming out, they're always like a month ahead with tutorials and I will see you in part 2 guys, you take care, hope you enjoyed.